Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Before we get to NC State, because you got to be in, who has impressed you the most in the NCAA tournament? That's easy. That's easy. Uh, Illinois. Oh, Illinois. I asked. I mean, it's NC State. It's NC State for me. Look at what they've done. How can you not answer North Carolina State? And you know what? I, I've given the, the Wolfpack fans a lot of shit over the years. A lot of shit. Because they're annoying as hell. And they want to win. And they, little brother syndrome, right, to Duke and Carolina. And, you know, they won it all years ago. And they've been living in the past for so long. They deserve nice things. Mm -hmm. They deserve nice things. And they finally get them. And Kevin Keats gives it to them. The guy that they wanted to run out of town three weeks ago <laughs> now has three more years in Raleigh. Good for him. First, it's the first Elite Eight for this program since Jim Valvano was walking the sidelines in 1986. I mean, if you're in the me mentioned in the same sentence as Jimmy V, say no more. And tonight, they held Marquette to four for 31 from three. Four for 31. And they were open shots. What? A lot of them were wide open looks. So how did this happen? What did you see that led to Marquette flopping? I I think it was just nerves. Like that, that's that's all it was. They missed a couple early, right? And then they got down, and I think it was one of those things where it just got in their head. And, and we could write it off as they just had one of those nights. We can write it off as, you know, the shots didn't go down. But the bottom line is this, and the same thing happened to Arizona the other night. They had good looks, and they had the shooters that they wanted shooting those good looks. And they didn't make those good looks. And that's that's part of what this game is, right? And, and I understand that there is this uh, this kind of push where people are like, look, you know what? This is just varies. You know, sometimes the shots aren't going to go yeah. down. Sometimes the shots are going to go down. There's, I understand that this idea that um, defensive three-point field goal percentage, there's really not all that much you can do. You can limit the number of attempts. And you can limit the quality attempts, but good shooters are going to make shots. It's very fluky in terms of how many players are actually, or how these players are actually able to shoot in the moment, right? Um, but I, I don't think that this is something where I, I don't want to. I don't want it to turn into just like, oh, they didn't make shots, and that's why NC State made. Like, no, NC State, State won the game. No, they're you know length I mean? defensively. I mean, at the end of the day, DJ Horn and Casey Morsell have been tough. You know what? Throughout this. NCAA tournament. DJ Horn is a man, and this is the stat that just blows my mind. In the first 29 games of the season, Mohamed Diara had five games where he scored in double figures. He's had five on the last six. He had a double double tonight. He has been a matchup nightmare for teams. Yeah, he dominated on the glass, and that was the thing. Like, if Oso Igadaro is oh. really good, Marquette has a chance to beat. He was not good today. Not good, not aggressive, caught the ball in the pain and didn't even look to score. It was so much on Tyler Kolick, and we said that all year, right? Like, Tyler Kolick needed more help. He got some from Cam Jones. Cam Jones wasn't very good in the first half. He started to make some shots in the second half. Too much on Tyler Kolick, not enough help. How, how disappointing. Mitchell, not enough. How, also, not enough. How disappointing is this for Shaka Smart? Well, obviously, you have a chance because how many more years are you going to get with Tyler Kolek? None, right? That's it. Does he have any left? He has one left. Does he have one left? All right, so maybe he take it? for one more. He should. He should. If you're Tyler Kolek, why not? I mean, unless you know you're going to get a, you know, you're going to be drafted in the 50s or 40s, you come back for another if, year. If I'm, if I'm Shaka, this is... Disappointing. This, this one this one hurts because by the way, Igadaro had a bad tournament. Yeah, he struck. He just really was not good. He struggled, and he's the linchpin to what they do. If, if I'm shocked, this one hurts. The same way if I'm Tommy Lloyd, last night's loss hurt because all of a sudden you have a path that is feasible, right? I don't know if Marquette was gonna be able to get past a healthy um, a healthy Houston. I think they can get past Duke. They can get they past Duke, Duke yeah. Duke. And, yeah. like, the bracket kind of opens up for you to get to the Final Four. And you've got the shots. Like, that's the thing that, that, that would 
probably would make it hurt more, but would allow you to sleep a little bit easier at night. You got the shots you wanted. Yes. They didn't go down, and that's what's going to happen. And and this idea that, like, um, it's kind of fluky that NC State or or, uh, or um, Clemson can be able to get to where they are because of an off shooting. Like, well, that's what you need if you have the lesser team. If the team that's better than you shoots some lights out, you got no chance. Yes. So you need to have one of those nights where maybe they're not playing their best, and that's what happened. I just – I worry too about Marquette, like beyond Kolick, they don't have a ton. So it's like when he leaves, what are you left with? Well, Cam Jones would would come back next and year. He's awesome. I love Cam Jones. But again, they got, they got a couple of young freshmen that are that have a chance to be pretty, like true. Good, kids good like, but uh, again, like probably Kolick, have to portal. As we saw tonight was the dude. And yeah, you're gonna have. You really haven't had to go to the portal. No, the last couple they've been years. anti-portal. Correct. Now you got to go, and you got to go hard. I have a note for you on this shooting performance. Marquette went four for thirty-one again tonight. Four for thirty-one. That's twelve point nine percent. There have been thirteen hundred thirty-one games in college basketball this year. Thirteen hundred thirty-one. That's more than players in the portal right now. It's close. 1331 games where a team has attempted 30 or more threes this season. That Marquette performance was the second worst shooting performance Bad of time. those games. What was the worst? Was Michigan State the worst? The worst oh, one. I'm so sorry to Bob Ritchie, but it was Furman. <laughs> Furman back on back in January against Chattanooga. Tough. Tough. Yeah, I mean, again, you don't think a team with Tyler Kolick and Cam Jones is going to have this type of shooting night. You just don't. You don't, but they happen. And, and when they happen, you have to find a way. And yeah. they dug themselves too big a hole. And honestly, every time it felt like Marquette made a little bit of a run, DJ Horn made a big play. What's more surprising? I thought of this tonight. Because it's the 12th time in the last 13 tournaments that a seven seed or worse has made the Elite Eight. Remember the Kansas State run with Bruce Weber? Oh, yeah. Does this NC State run kind of remind – like? Or they just sort of yeah, they beat Kentucky. And Keats is saving his job like Weber did that year yeah. for the time being. Yeah, no, you're right. I remember talking to Bruce Weber after that game, asking him about it. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Keats is embracing it right now. You can tell they're having a blast because, <laughs> again, they're playing loose and they're going to get a Duke team that they can play completely loose. They're going to be a big time underdog, probably six, seven points. Going there confident as hell, too. But Would you welcome NC State fans to our set in Arizona? Hell I know yeah. you have a, you know. Yeah, we got a little bit of a hot and cold. We can bring in Scotty McCreary, <laughs> big time NC State fan. The tell singer? Him who, tell him who we met at uh, at, in who, Vegas. Who did we meet in Vegas? Come Come on. On. Who? Chris Corciani. Chris Corciani. We'll bring in Corciani. Maybe we can bring in Fire and Ice, Chris Corciani and how about, and how, about, how about our man, the greatest shooter ever on the field of 68? Forget Randolph Childers. Forget Terrence Oglesby. Scott Wood. Scott Wood can shoot the hell out of it. I have to say this. You can really get a one man wolf State contingent. I have to say this. The image of, of Trevor Valise and Dagan Hughes producing one of our shows and us saying, all right, that's going to do it for our analysis for now. Ladies and gentlemen, for a live musical guest, Scotty McCreary. <laughs> Could we have a live singer? Why not? Why not? Why not? I, I think I think Field of 68 is absolutely due. A live musical performance. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.